Why is Borobudur considered one of the greatest Buddhist temples in the world? The mountain like Borobudur is an enormous Buddhist temple built in the 9th century in Java. Indonesia, and not discovered by outsiders until the 19th century. Based on the stupa form. The temple is covered in ornate sculptures and staircases oriented to the points of the compass. The mountain form is no accident it is in fact a key element of the temple's complex symbolism. What is an illuminated manuscript? An illuminated manuscript is an illustrated book, and was one of the most important forms of art in medieval Europe. And elsewhere, including the Islamic Empire. During the early Middle Ages, European illuminated manuscripts were an important part of Christian missionary activities. And Christian monasteries were at the heart of manuscript production. Specially trained monks, called scribes, wrote text on two different types of animal skin. Vellum and parchment, as paper was not common until the 15th century. Medieval illuminator supplemented the text with colorful decoration. Often designing large initials and full color illustrations that took up an entire page. Illuminated manuscripts were very labor intensive and expensive. The ink alone was worth as much as a semi precious stone. And sometimes gold leaf was used in the decoration. Manuscripts were sometimes protected with expensive jewel encrusted covers, such as the cover of the Lindau Gospels. Who is Amitabha Buddha? Amitabha Buddha was a mortal king who reached an enlightened state and became a Buddha. In the tradition of Pure Land Buddhism, the most popular form of Buddhism in China. Known as the Buddha of Infinite Life and Infinite Light as well as Buddha of the West. Amitabha Buddha promises rebirth in Paradise, or Western Pure Land, for those with faith. Why are Etruscan tombs built to look like houses? Known for cremating their dead, the Etruscans seem to have thought of their tombs as being like homes for the dead in the afterlife. The tombs themselves were organized in a grid-like pattern, much like a small downtown. The Tomb of the Reliefs is a famous Etruscan tomb that features pots, tools, and even couches. All carved from stone and made to look like objects from a normal Etruscan house. There is even a carving of the family dog. But, there is also a carving of Cerberus. The three-headed dog who guards the entrance to the underworld, according to Greek mythology. Much like the Egyptians, the Etruscans attempted to bring the dead the comforts of home. What happened?
Did the medieval artists forget how to draw? Is this a result of the so-called Dark Ages? Looking at medieval art from a contemporary perspective occasionally raises questions about quality but it is important to remember that medieval artists, including painters, were highly skilled craftsmen who worked meticulously on their designs. Medieval artists made specific choices about their work and were motivated not by realism, but by religion. In the 6th century, a debate arose amongst Christian church leaders as to whether or not figurative imagery was appropriate for religious art. Then, Pope Gregory the Great declared, painting can do for the illiterate. What writing does for those who can read, as quoted in Gombrich 135. The goal of medieval art, according to Pope Gregory, was to simply and clearly depict religious themes. The quality of the artwork was not supposed to overshadow its religious content for fear of idol worship. Who were the Etruscans? The Etruscan civilization flourished in Italy for nearly 500 years. Until the Etruscans were conquered by the Romans in 509 B. C. They controlled a fertile region known as Etruria, now called Tuscany. The art and culture of the ancient Etruscans were certainly influenced by the ancient Greeks. In fact, the Etruscans adopted a number of Greek gods into their pantheon. But, they also maintained a unique tradition of their own. And went on to influence the ancient Romans who absorbed their culture. What is Chan Buddhism? Chan Buddhism, known in Japan as Zen Buddhism, is a school of Mahayana Buddhism that developed in China in the 6th century and gained importance during the Song dynasties. Chan Buddhist philosophy emphasizes the direct experience of the individual and enlightenment through meditation. While some Chan Buddhists believe enlightenment through meditation takes a lifetime to achieve, others believe enlightenment can be achieved suddenly, in a flash of understanding. Chan Buddhism had a large impact on Chinese painting. The 13th century painter Liang Kai's simple, yet expressive, hanging scroll. 6th Chan Patriarch Chopping Bamboo, depicts a crouching patriarch who suddenly achieves enlightenment after hearing the sound of his blade striking bamboo wood. What is the Sudden Hu Ship? The Sutton Hu ship is an Anglo-Saxon burial ship. Discovered off the coast of England in 1939. The ship likely belonged to King Raedwald who died in 625. And was purposefully sunk as a funerary memorial to an important person. No body was ever found aboard the Sutton Hu ship, however. 
so it is possible the ship served as a monument to someone who was buried in another location. The ship was over 90 feet long and filled with early medieval treasure. Such as gold coins, armor, and jewel encrusted accessories. The objects found with the Sutton Hu ship represent some of the most valuable examples of medieval Anglo Saxon art. What did Etruscan temples look like? Etruscan temples were greatly inspired by Greek architecture and went on to influence Roman temple architecture. Etruscan temples were nearly square and raised on a tall foundation known as a podium. Built of mud bricks, about half of the temple was devoted to three interior rooms. And the other half was made up of a large porch supported by a double rows of columns. Columns were made either of wood, or volcanic rock called tufa. These relatively simple buildings were elaborately painted and decorated with architectural sculpture. Not on the pediment, as the Greeks would have done, but on the roof. Etruscan temple sculpture was made from terracotta, a challenging material to work with. And they precariously placed their pieces along roof lines and ridge poles. Overall, an Etruscan temple looks small and heavy. Supporting a cast of terracotta gods and goddess milling around on its roof. What happened to the Venus de Milo's arms? In 1820, the remains of the Venus de Milo were accidentally discovered by a farmer on the Greek island of Melos, from which the sculpture gets its name. Since then, the Venus de Milo has become one of the most famous works of art in the world. Many other broken fragments of marble were found in the same field. And some of those pieces may have been fragments of her arms. These pieces suggest that the Venus de Milo might have been holding an apple in her right hand. But, there is another theory. Rather than an apple, she may have been admiring herself in the reflection of a polished shield. The second theory does the best to explain why the Venus de Milo's left leg is slightly bent and her body somewhat twisted. Unfortunately, the fragments found with the statue are now lost. But it doesn't end here, the lovely statue finds herself in yet another controversy. What is the paradise of Amitabha painting? The paradise of Amitabha is an 8th century wall painting within the Dunhuan Caves. An important Buddhist site along the Silk Road in northwestern China. In the 9th century, the Tang Emperor Wuzong had ordered Buddhist temples and shrines to be destroyed. But Buddhist art in the Dunhuan Cave survived such a fate. In the painting, the large figure seated in the center is Amitabha on a raised platform. Lesser deities and bodhisattvas dance around Amitabha. 
in a lavish scene that evokes the splendor of paradise. Why is medieval European painting so bad? There is no question medieval painting is not particularly realistic. Much of it is simplistic, flat, and lacks natural proportion. Why was Charlemagne interested in illustrated manuscripts? The medieval ruler Charlemagne was crowned Holy Roman Emperor in the year 800 and controlled a territory that included Germany, France, the Netherlands, and parts of Italy. As Holy Roman Emperor, Charlemagne's goal was to unify his secular government with the Christian Church and to restore the Western Roman Empire, albeit as a Christian kingdom. Charlemagne clearly saw the power of arts and education as a fundamental part of his campaign. And he turned to monasteries the intellectual centers of the medieval world to support his mission of conquering all of Europe. Charlemagne's court in Aachen, Germany, became a leading center for artists including architects, sculptors, and illuminators. Charlemagne's scriptoria in Aachen produced some of the most important illuminated manuscripts of the of late 8th and 9th centuries in Europe, which resulted in the spread of Christianity. The standardization of church practices, and the solidification of the emperor's power across Europe. What is the significance of the recumbent Buddha? The Buddha is occasionally depicted reclining on his side with an arm tucked under his ear. While the other arm stretches the length of his body. This body positions indicates the Parinirvana, or death of the Buddha. In the Southeast Asian tradition, also popular in China and Japan. In Sri Lanka, a 46 foot long sculpture of the recumbent Buddha was carved from a single massive rock at a temple site known as Gal Vihara. Made sometime between the 11th and 12th centuries, this monumental representation of the Buddha's Parinirvana shows the holy man surrounded by a smaller scale mourner, likely his cousin, Ananda. A small pillow, carved from stone, supports the Buddha's head, his face is round. And his thin robes appear to cling to his body in the traditional iconographic manner. What is the theater at Epidaurus? The theater at Epidaurus, c. 350 BCE, was an example of ancient Greek civic architecture meant to be enjoyed by the general public. The art of the theater was an important part of ancient Greek culture and religion. As religious ceremonies were incorporated with music and dance, and performed in public spaces. Greek drama, including tragedies and comedies. 
were performed in outdoor spaces like the theater at Epidaurus. At the heart of the theater was the circular orchestra, the central performance area. Fifty-five rows of semicircular tiered seats were carved into a hillside, which allowed as many as 14,000 spectators a good view of the orchestra. The design of the theater at Epidaurus is so effective that it is still in use today. And the acoustics are so perfect that no electrified sound system is needed when performances are held at the site. What is the animal style? Animal style is a term art historians use to describe the zoomorphic or animal-based. Design motifs popular among Anglo-Saxon artisans during the medieval period. In the animal style, Abstract animal motifs merge with geometric and organic motifs, creating a lively and intricate pattern, especially in metalwork. One of the most famous examples of the animal style is a purse cover from the Sutton Hoo burial ship. The purse cover is about 8 inches long and would have been used to cover a leather pouch for carrying coins. The purse was designed with interweaving bands of gold, surrounding deep blue and red plagues of enamel and garnet. A pair of highly stylized human figures with splayed legs are each flanked by a pair of wolves. Serpentine lines undulate around the curving form of the purse cover, broken into rhythmic rectangles. A study of Anglo-Saxon decorative arts, such as the Sutton Hoo purse cover, show the influence of many medieval cultures, such as Germanic tribes, Vikings, and Christians. What is the Caroline script? In the early medieval period, scribes were responsible for hand-copying illuminated manuscripts. And although these scribes were specially trained, penmanship was overall quite poor, and scribes did not follow a specific set of rules when writing. During the Carolingian period, Carolingian is an adjective used to indicate the rule of Charlemagne and his descendants, a new system of writing was developed, which resulted in much greater consistency from scriptorium to scriptorium. The use of majuscules, or capital letters, was based on the ancient Roman alphabet. Majuscules were used in titles and headings, and on only the most formal manuscripts. Lowercase letters, or minuscules, were quicker and easier overall, and were used for less formal writing. What is Guan Wei? Guanware is a type of imperial ceramic associated with the Song dynasty. Guanware vases were made of smooth stoneware and covered in a crackled white, and sometimes soft blue and green. Glaze, with round, bulbous bottoms, graceful stretched necks, and narrow lips. These sophisticated ceramics juxtapose meticulous craftsmanship with the unpredictability of the glazing process. 
in which the glaze cracks once the vessel is removed from the kill and begins to cool. What is Guan Wear? Guan Wear is a type of imperial ceramic associated with the Song dynasty. Guan Wear vases were made of smooth stoneware and covered in a crackled white, and sometimes soft blue and green. Glaze, with round, bulbous bottoms, graceful stretched necks, and narrow lips. These sophisticated ceramics juxtapose meticulous craftsmanship with the unpredictability of the glazing process. In which the glaze cracks once the vessel is removed from the kill and begins to cool. Who were the literati? The literati, or Wenren in Chinese, were highly educated. Scholar painters often held in higher regard than the imperial court painters of the time because of their free-thinking intellectuality and because they did not rely on their art to make a living. Emerging during the Song dynasty, the literati are known for their relatively austere black ink paintings. Created using a painting technique called Shi Mo. They were also highly skilled calligraphers and poets. Who were the literati? The literati, or Wenren in Chinese, were highly educated. Scholar painters often held in higher regard than the imperial court painters of the time because of their free-thinking intellectuality and because they did not rely on their art to make a living. Emerging during the Song dynasty, the literati are known for their relatively austere black ink paintings. Created using a painting technique called Shi Mo. They were also highly skilled calligraphers and poets. What are characteristics of Yuan painting? The Yuan dynasty began with the rule of Kublai Khan, the grandson of Genghis Khan, who ruled until 1294. Mongolian power remained in China until 1368 and the effect of Mongolian culture on Chinese art continues to be debated. Yuan painters preferred to work on paper rather than silk and their style is characterized by solid, hard-edged forms. What are characteristics of Yuan painting? The Yuan dynasty began with the rule of Kublai Khan, the grandson of Genghis Khan, who ruled until 1294. Mongolian power remained in China until 1368 and the effect of Mongolian culture on Chinese art continues to be debated. Yuan painters preferred to work on paper rather than silk. And their style is characterized by solid, hard-edged forms.
who was Guan Da's hung. Guan Doisheng was a renowned female calligrapher, painter, and poet working during the Yuan dynasty. She was famous for her paintings of bamboo plants. Bamboo was an important symbol in Chinese art because the plant's branches and leaves are reminiscent of calligraphy. And because bamboo is flexible under pressure it will bend, but not break. Guan Daoshan's hand scroll, 10,000 bamboo poles in cloudy mist. Is the earliest surviving example of work done by a woman in China. In this painting, delicate bamboo leaves are lush and meticulously depicted. While the firm shoots are thought to represent faithfulness and fidelity. Who was Guan Da's hung? Guan Doisheng was a renowned female calligrapher, painter, and poet working during the Yuan dynasty. She was famous for her paintings of bamboo plants. Bamboo was an important symbol in Chinese art because the plant's branches and leaves are reminiscent of calligraphy. And because bamboo is flexible under pressure it will bend, but not break. Guan Daoshan's hand scroll, 10,000 bamboo poles in cloudy mist. Is the earliest surviving example of work done by a woman in China. In this painting, delicate bamboo leaves are lush and meticulously depicted. While the firm shoots are thought to represent faithfulness and fidelity. What are the major periods of pre-modern Korean art? Under the influence of the Chinese emperor, the establishment of the Silla Kingdom resulted in a unified Korea in the year 668, around the time of the Tang Dynasty in China, and lasted until approximately the year 935. Silla rulers supported Buddhism, establishing it as Korea's official religion and embraced Buddhist architecture, though no structures from the Silla Kingdom survive. Overlapping slightly with the unified Silla Kingdom was the succeeding Koryo Kingdom. Sometimes spelled Goryeo, which began in the year 918 and lasted until 1392. Artists from the Koryo period were known for their refined ceramics. What are the major periods of pre-modern Korean art? Under the influence of the Chinese emperor, the establishment of the Silla Kingdom resulted in a unified Korea in the year 668, around the time of the Tang Dynasty in China and lasted until approximately the year 935. Silla rulers supported Buddhism, establishing it as Korea's official religion, and embraced Buddhist architecture, though no structures from the Silla kingdom survive. Overlapping slightly with the unified Silla kingdom was the succeeding Koryo kingdom, sometimes spelled Goryeo, which began in the year 918 and lasted until 1392. 
Artists from the Koryo period were known for their refined ceramics. What is Celadon ware? Celadon ware is a type of Korean ceramic from the Koryo period made with translucent, pigmented glazes. Usually grey, pale blue-green, and olive in tone, Celadon ware from the 11th century was known for its simplicity. While examples from the 12th century were more complex. Often inlaid or stamped with decorative elements, such as black and white pictorial scenes. What is Celadon ware? Celadon ware is a type of Korean ceramic from the Koryo period made with translucent, pigmented glazes. Usually grey, pale blue-green, and olive in tone, Celadon ware from the 11th century was known for its simplicity. While examples from the 12th century were more complex. Often inlaid or stamped with decorative elements, such as black and white pictorial scenes. How did Buddhism influence Japanese art? Pure Land Buddhism Jodo in Japanese, was the primary form of Buddhism in Japan. As well as China, coming to particular prominence during the Heian period. Jodo remains the most popular type of Buddhism in Japan. The Amitabha Buddha, known in Japan as Amitabha Buddha, was an important subject in sculpture and painting, as was the concept of paradise. Esoteric Buddhism was also important in Japan, where it was called Mikya. Highly influenced by Hinduism, Esoteric Buddhism is hierarchical and features many complex deities. An important visual element of Esoteric Buddhism are mandaras, mandalas in Sanskrit. Cosmic diagrams of the universe used in ritual, meditation, and teaching. The womb world mandara from the Heian period, is one of the oldest and most well-preserved Japanese examples. The work is filled with images of gods and Buddhas, and a central image of Dainichi, the universal Buddha. Some of the gods have multiple heads and limbs. And many hold lightning bolts, which symbolize the power of the mind. How did Buddhism influence Japanese art? Pure Land Buddhism Jodo in Japanese, was the primary form of Buddhism in Japan. As well as China, coming to particular prominence during the Heian period. Jodo remains the most popular type of Buddhism in Japan. The Amitabha Buddha, known in Japan as Amitabha Buddha, was an important subject in sculpture and painting, as was the concept of paradise. Esoteric Buddhism was also important in Japan, where it was called Mikya. Highly influenced by Hinduism, Esoteric Buddhism is hierarchical and features many complex deities. 
An important visual element of esoteric Buddhism are mandaras, mandalas in Sanskrit. Cosmic diagrams of the universe used in ritual, meditation, and teaching. The womb world mandara from the Heian period, is one of the oldest and most well-preserved Japanese examples. The work is filled with images of gods and Buddhas, and a central image of Dainichi, the universal Buddha. Some of the gods have multiple heads and limbs. And many hold lightning bolts, which symbolize the power of the mind. What is a Rego image? A Rego was a type of image that warmly depicted the Amida Buddha welcoming dying souls to paradise. The descent of the Amida Trinity is a Rego triptych from the Kamakura period in which the Illuminated forms of the Amida Buddha and two Bodhisattvas appear to hover against a dark background. The radiant figures were done with gold paint and gold leaf. Creating a contrast with the otherwise subdued silk surface of the triptych. The image emphasizes comfort and peace in the face of death. What is a Rego image? A Rego was a type of image that warmly depicted the Amida Buddha welcoming dying souls to paradise. The descent of the Amida Trinity is a Rego triptych from the Kamakura period in which the Illuminated forms of the Amida Buddha and two Bodhisattvas appear to hover against a dark background. The radiant figures were done with gold paint and gold leaf. Creating a contrast with the otherwise subdued silk surface of the triptych. The image emphasizes comfort and peace in the face of death. Who was Jocko? Jocko was one of Japan's most innovative sculptors. Known for developing a process called joint wood construction. The joint wood method involved designing a sculpture in sections. Each carved from a separate block of wood. These blocks were hollowed and then assembled. This process allowed for larger, lighter sculptures that were less likely to warp and crack. During the Heian period, Jocko created a joint wood Rego sculpture of the Amida Buddha. That evokes the rich complexity of Western paradise and is housed at the heart of Biodo Inn. Who was Jocko? Jocko was one of Japan's most innovative sculptors. Known for developing a process called joint wood construction. The joint wood method involved designing a sculpture in sections. Each carved from a separate block of wood. These blocks were hollowed and then assembled. This process allowed for larger, lighter sculptures that were less likely to warp and crack. During the Heian period, Jocko created a joint wood Rego sculpture of the Amida Buddha. 
that evokes the rich complexity of Western paradise and is housed at the heart of Biodo Inn. What is Biodo Inn? Biodoin is a Buddhist temple originally built during the Heian period in a mountainous region near Kyoto. Considered one of the most beautiful pure land Buddhist temples. Biodoin is also known as Phoenix Hall because of two bronze phoenixes on the roof. And because the building's upswept rooflines are considered bird-like. It sits in front of a reflecting pond designed in the shape of the Sanskrit letter A. Which is the sacred symbol of the Amida Buddha. What is Biodoin? Biodoin is a Buddhist temple originally built during the Heian period in a mountainous region near Kyoto. Considered one of the most beautiful pure land Buddhist temples. Biodoin is also known as Phoenix Hall because of two bronze phoenixes on the roof. And because the building's upswept rooflines are considered bird-like. It sits in front of a reflecting pond designed in the shape of the Sanskrit letter A. Which is the sacred symbol of the Amida Buddha. Who was Lady Murasaki? Lady Murasaka was a Heianera lady in waiting in the court of Empress Consort Taishi. She was a celebrated poet and novelist and wrote the tale of Genji, considered to be the world's first novel. While Chinese was the official language of scholarship in Korea and Japan. The tale of Genji was written in Japanese. At 54 chapters, the work included over 400 characters. And told the story of the 84 love affairs of Prince Genji and life at court. 20 chapters of Lady Murasaka's The Tale of Genji survive as illustrated scrolls. Likely completed by a team of artists, including a calligrapher. The paintings are muted and refined, with an architectural focus. Figures can be seen indoors from above using a technique of representing invisible, blown away roofs. Both the novel and the images make a connection between human emotion and nature. And reflect Buddhist ideas of fleeting earthly pleasures. Who was Lady Murasaki? Lady Murasaki was a Heianera lady in waiting in the court of Empress Consort Taishi. She was a celebrated poet and novelist and wrote the tale of Genji, considered to be the world's first novel. While Chinese was the official language of scholarship in Korea and Japan. The tale of Genji was written in Japanese. At 54 chapters, the work included over 400 characters. And told the story of the 84 love affairs of Prince Genji and life at court. 20 chapters of Lady Murasaka's The Tale of Genji survive as illustrated scrolls. 
likely completed by a team of artists, including a calligrapher. The paintings are muted and refined, with an architectural focus. Figures can be seen indoors from above using a technique of representing invisible, blown away roofs. Both the novel and the images make a connection between human emotion and nature. And reflect Buddhist ideas of fleeting earthly pleasures. What is the difference between a shogun, a daimyo, and a samurai? From the 12th century until the 19th century. Japan was a feudal society controlled by a powerful ruler, called a shogun. The shogun maintained power over his large territory. The daimyo, a Japanese word meaning great names, were feudal landowners equivalent to medieval European lords. The daimyo commanded the samurai, a distinct class of swordsmen trained to be devoted to the shogun. What is the difference between a shogun, a daimyo, and a samurai? From the 12th century until the 19th century. Japan was a feudal society controlled by a powerful ruler, called a shogun. The shogun maintained power over his large territory. The daimyo, a Japanese word meaning great names, were feudal landowners equivalent to medieval European lords. The daimyo commanded the samurai, a distinct class of swordsmen trained to be devoted to the shogun. What is Autonian art? Autonian art is a term that refers to the art and architecture produced under a new powerful dynasty that established itself in the eastern portion of the Holy Roman Empire after the power of the Carolingian dynasty had faded. Three main rulers, Otto I, Otto II. And Otto III ruled from 919 to 1002 and were based in modern day Germany. During the Ottonian period, the arts flourished and new innovations in architecture, metalwork, and ivory carving were key elements in the so called Ottonian Renaissance. How did Romans make their mosaics? Mosaics were very popular in ancient Rome and, like realistic wall paintings, were used extensively to decorate the floors of private homes and villas of the wealthy. At the heart of a Roman mosaic artessery, small pieces of glass and stone, often in a cube shape. The tesserae were pressed into cement, which was also used as a sort of grout in the spaces between the stones. Mosaic panels, called emblemata, were usually built off-site by the mosaic artist and then installed into a floor. Romans liked to copy famous paintings in mosaic form. 
which required very tiny pebbles in order to achieve the detail of a painting. A number of lost Greek paintings still exist in a Roman mosaic form. Who was Jocko? Jocko was one of Japan's most innovative sculptors. Known for developing a process called joined wood construction. The joined wood method involved designing a sculpture in sections. Each carved from a separate block of wood. These blocks were hollowed and then assembled. This process allowed for larger, lighter sculptures that were less likely to warp and crack. During the Heian period, Jocko created a joined wood rego sculpture of the Amida Buddha. That evokes the rich complexity of Western paradise and is housed at the heart of Biodo Inn. Why did the Romans copy Greek sculpture? Much like today, a large art collection was an indication of wealth and status in ancient Rome. Greek art was held in high regard by the ever-expanding Romans who set about conquering the Mediterranean and coming home with art and treasure from across the land. Roman artists copied many marble and bronze statues in order to meet popular demand usually working in marble. Not all Roman sculptures were exact copies, however. Roman sculptors adapted Greek sculpture and updated it to match the tastes of the Roman art-buying public. All in all, we are lucky the Romans did so much copying. Many original Greek bronzes were long ago melted down, to make things such as weapons and armor. And therefore much of our knowledge of Greek art comes from Roman copies. How does Roman architecture differ from Greek architecture? Greek and Roman architecture are together referred to as classical architecture. As they share many characteristics including an adherence to the classical Greek orders of architecture and a sense of symmetry and balance. But, there are some key differences. Whereas the Greeks favored marble, the Romans invented concrete and they relied on this key building material in much of their architecture. Romans also emphasized circular forms and made extensive use of the arch, vault, and dome in their building projects, unlike the post and lintel structure of Greek buildings. While Greek buildings tended to feature cramped interiors built on a more human scale, Roman buildings had dramatically high ceilings and were generally more flamboyant than their Greek counterparts. What is Roman illusionism? The ancient Romans were known for their beautiful paintings which they used to decorate the interiors of domestic residences. These paintings often created the illusion of space, much like a theater backdrop. 
and featured elements such as faux architectural motifs and outdoor scenes. The Villa of Pifanius Sinister in Italy has some of the most important surviving wall paintings from the Roman world. The villa was buried by volcanic ash when Mount Vesuvius erupted in 79 BCE. Nearby Pompeii was also destroyed, and was excavated in the early 20th century. Many of the paintings here feature objects painted using the trompe l'oeil technique. Which means trick of the eye. For example, an image of a glass vase in the painting looks so real that it appears to exist in three dimensional space. These illusionistic wall paintings were a status symbol. For the wealthy Romans who filled their villas with them. What is a triumphal arch? A triumphal arch is a large monumental structure in the shape of a freestanding arched passageway. They were used in ancient Rome to commemorate great military victories. The Arch of Titus, C81 CE, and the Arch of Constantine, 312 to 315 CE, are two of the most famous examples of triumphal arches in Rome. Over 50 feet tall and made of marble and concrete. The Arch of Titus was constructed after Emperor Titus conquered the city of Jerusalem. Relief carvings on the interior of the structure show Roman soldiers proudly carrying home the spoils of war. Including a menorah taken from the Temple of Solomon. Built almost 300 years later, the Arch of Constantine celebrates Emperor Constantine's defeat of Maxentius at the Battle of Mulvan Bridge. The event is important in Christian history as Constantine was said to have had a vision of a cross and heard the words In this sign you shall conquer just before battle. Constantine's mother, Helen, was Christian. And Constantine ended legal persecutions of Christians in Rome in the Edict of Milan. The Arch of Constantine was made of partly recycled material, and incorporated relief decoration. From monuments dedicated to earlier rulers such as Marcus Aurelius, Trajan, and Hadrian. Triumphal arches continue to be used to mark important historic events and can be found in cities such as Paris, New York, and Moscow. What is the Gupta style? Associated with art produced during the reign of Gupta rulers, who ruled in eastern India from c. 320 to 450 CE, the Gupta style is characterized by naturalistic. Though idealized, images of the Buddha and Bodhisattvas in both painting and sculpture. A great example of the Gupta style is the wall painting of the Bodhisattva known. As the beautiful Padmapani, painted in the late 5th century. Padmapani is shown as serene and relaxed, withdrawn from the material world swirling around him. Strong outlines emphasize the form of the figure, but the rest of the body is smooth and anatomically undefined. 
With downcast eyes, the painting exhibits the Gupta emphasis on naturalism. Balance, and spiritual detachment. How did Buddhism influence Japanese art? Pure Land Buddhism Jodo in Japanese, was the primary form of Buddhism in Japan. As well as China, coming to particular prominence during the Heian period. Jodo remains the most popular type of Buddhism in Japan. The Amitabha Buddha, known in Japan as Amitabha Buddha, was an important subject in sculpture and painting, as was the concept of paradise. Esoteric Buddhism was also important in Japan, where it was called Mikya. Highly influenced by Hinduism, Esoteric Buddhism is hierarchical and features many complex deities. An important visual element of Esoteric Buddhism are mandaras, mandalas in Sanskrit. Cosmic diagrams of the universe used in ritual, meditation, and teaching. The womb world mandara from the Heian period, is one of the oldest and most well-preserved Japanese examples. The work is filled with images of gods and Buddhas, and a central image of Dainichi, the universal Buddha. Some of the gods have multiple heads and limbs. And many hold lightning bolts, which symbolize the power of the mind. What is Angkor Wat? Angkor Wat is an enormous Hindu temple complex in Cambodia featuring a series of walled courtyards leading to a group of central towers. Built over 30 years by the Khmer King Suryavarman II during the first half of the 12th century. Angkor Wat's five lotus-shaped towers each symbolize peaks of Mount Meru. A mountain considered sacred in Hindu, Jain, and Buddhist traditions. The central tower is approximately 200 feet tall and the entire complex is aligned with the sun. So that on the summer solstice, the sun rises up directly over the central tower when viewed from the western gate. Suryavarman II's goal was to associate himself with the god Vishnu and the entire temple. Complex is covered in miles of relief carvings depicting the king and the many avatars of Vishnu. What is the orator? The orator is a life-size, bronze sculpture of Aulus Metellus. A Roman official from the time of the Roman Republic. Made in either the 1st or 2nd century BCE. The work depicts the authoritative politician addressing a crowd with his right arm raised. Wearing traditional leather boots and a toga, the portrait sculpture is part of a tradition of Roman realism known as Verism. Popular during the time of the Democratic Republic. Statues like this would have been placed on the tops of columns as a form of memorial. Where it would appear as if the figure was addressing the people below.
What is the Colosseum? The Colosseum is an ancient Roman stadium designed to seat 50,000 spectators for events such as gladiator and animal fights. Romans even held mock sea battles here, and were able to flood the arena for such events. Built between 72 and 80 CE. It was the largest Roman amphitheater and was originally known as the Flavian Amphitheater. The original central arena was nearly 30,000 square feet. And the whole structure is more than 600 feet in diameter. The facade of the building was made of three levels of 80 arch arcades. A row of arches, plus an attic level, and supported six tiers of seats. Under the seats, Barrel vaulted corridors allowed for the passage of athletes and animals. Each of the three arcade levels is decorated according to a different architectural order. Which become more complex as the building rises. The first floor utilizes the simple Tuscan order. While the second and third floor incorporate elements from the Ionic and Corinthian order, respectively. The exterior had been faced with travertine, but this relatively expensive material has since been looted. What is Guan Ware? Guanware is a type of imperial ceramic associated with the Song dynasty. Guanware vases were made of smooth stoneware and covered in a crackled white, and sometimes soft blue and green. Glaze, with round, bulbous bottoms, graceful stretched necks, and narrow lips. These sophisticated ceramics juxtapose meticulous craftsmanship with the unpredictability of the glazing process. In which the glaze cracks once the vessel is removed from the kill and begins to cool. What does a Hindu temple look like? Hindu temples are one of the primary examples of Hindu architecture in India and Southeast Asia. They are usually built of cut rock, and although there is a great deal of stylistic diversity, are generally placed within two categories, Northern and Southern style. Hindu temples are raised on a podium, some would like an Etruscan temple, called a plinth. Temples in the northern style feature a large tower in the shape of a beehive. Called Shikhara, which means mountain peak. Atop the tower is a rounded form known as an amulika because of the similarly shaped umla fruit. These amalekas are used to decorate lower portions of the Shikhara as well. The halls of a northern-style temple have a series of halls called mandapas, which lead to the Garbhagriha, an inner sanctuary used to house a sacred image. The halls are themselves decorated with smaller, tower-like roofs. An example of a northern-style Hindu temple is the Kandarya Mahadeva temple in Kajuraho, India which was built around 1000 CE southern style Hindu temples feature a pyramid like tiered tower called a vimana and this is topped with a round capstone 
The halls of a southern style temple also lead to an inner chamber. But have flat roofs and pillared mandapas. An example of a southern style Hindu temple is the Rajarajvara temple in Tanjavur. India, which was built around 1010 CE. What does the earliest Jewish and Christian art look like? Most of the earliest Jewish and Christian art dates from the Hellenistic period and takes its cues from Near Eastern and Classical, Greek and Roman, art. Early Jewish artists were forbidden from making any form that could be worshipped as an idol and therefore avoided representational art. Early Christian art drew its symbols from Jewish tradition as well as classical tradition. A common subject in early Christian art, for example, is the Good Shepherd. In the classical tradition, the Good Shepherd represents the mythological figure. Orpheus, who is shown holding a sheep around his shoulders. Early Christian artists used this as a model for early images of Christ in both sculptural and painted form. Referring to Psalm 23 which states, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I lack, Psalm 23 colon 1. This is an example of syncretism, an art historical term which refers to the merging of meaning and imagery between different cultures and religions. What are characteristics of you in painting? The UN dynasty began with the rule of Kublai Khan, the grandson of Genghis Khan, who ruled until 1294. Mongolian power remained in China until 1368 and the effect of Mongolian culture on Chinese art continues to be debated. UN painters preferred to work on paper rather than silk. And their style is characterized by solid, hard-edged forms. What is the God's Calc Gospel Lectionary? The God's Calc Gospel Lectionary was one of the first Carolingian illuminated manuscripts to use the new Caroline script and was named for a scribe who signed his name in the book. Produced at the court scriptorium at Aachen, it was meant to be read aloud and commemorated the 781 baptism of Charlemagne's son. The God's Calc Gospel Lectionary is notable for its artistic naturalism and incorporation of ancient Roman styles. The luxurious manuscript, with gold and silver lettering, and extensive use of the color purple. One of the most expensive pigments, served as an artistic inspiration and a model for later gospel books. What is Celadon wear? Celadone ware is a type of Korean ceramic from the Koryo period made with translucent, pigmented glazes. Usually grey, 
pale blue-green, and olive in tone, Celadon ware from the 11th century was known for its simplicity. While examples from the 12th century were more complex. Often inlaid or stamped with decorative elements, such as black and white pictorial scenes. What was impressive about the doors of Bishop Burn Ward? The splendidly designed bronze doors of Bishop Burn Ward were built for the Abbey Church of St. Michael's in Hildesheim, Germany. The doors themselves are enormous over 16 feet tall and are the first example of monumental bronze sculpture made by the lost wax process since antiquity. Each door was made as one piece a remarkable technical feat. Considering the complex relief sculpture covering each door. Notable for their masterful metalwork, the doors are also impressive due to their complex narrative imagery which outlines both Old and New Testament events. Each door is divided into eight panels, each representing a specific biblical scene. A design likely inspired from manuscript illumination. What is Beadoin? Beodoin is a Buddhist temple originally built during the Heian period in a mountainous region near Kyoto. Considered one of the most beautiful Pure Land Buddhist temples. Beodoin is also known as Phoenix Hall because of two bronze phoenixes on the roof. And because the building's upswept rooflines are considered bird-like. It sits in front of a reflecting pond designed in the shape of the Sanskrit letter A. Which is the sacred symbol of the Amida Buddha. Who was Lady Murasaki? Lady Murasaka was a Heianera lady-in-waiting in the court of Empress Consort Taishi. She was a celebrated poet and novelist and wrote the tale of Genji, considered to be the world's first novel. While Chinese was the official language of scholarship in Korea and Japan. The tale of Genji was written in Japanese. At 54 chapters, the work included over 400 characters and told the story of the 84 love affairs of Prince Genji and life at court. 20 chapters of Lady Murasaka's The Tale of Genji survive as illustrated scrolls. Likely completed by a team of artists, including a calligrapher. The paintings are muted and refined, with an architectural focus. Figures can be seen indoors from above using a technique of representing invisible, blown away roofs. Both the novel and the images make a connection between human emotion and nature. And reflect Buddhist ideas of fleeting earthly pleasures. What is a Rego image? A Rego was a type of image that warmly depicted the Amida Buddha welcoming dying souls to paradise. 
The descent of the Amida Trinity is a rego triptych from the Kamakura period in which the illuminated forms of the Amida Buddha and two Bodhisattvas appear to hover against a dark background. The radiant figures were done with gold paint and gold leaf. Creating a contrast with the otherwise subdued silk surface of the triptych. The image emphasizes comfort and peace in the face of death. What is the Pantheon? Topped with the widest dome on earth until the 19th century. The Pantheon is an important example of Roman architecture, built between 125 to 128 c. e. during the reign of Emperor Hadrian. The name Pantheon refers to the fact that the temple was dedicated to all of the Olympian gods, who the Romans worshipped as the Greeks had done. The Pantheon was originally built on a podium, like an Etruscan temple, but hundreds of years of development around the site now hide this. Along with the original stairs which led up the middle of the podium. The entrance portico features Corinthian columns and leads to an enormous rotunda. The walls of the rotunda are nearly 75 feet tall and 20 feet thick which support the enormous dome. At the apex of the dome is a 30-foot oculus, which means eye and allows natural sunlight and sometimes rain, to pour into the interior of the Pantheon. Besides the engineering innovations needed to build such a wide dome, spanning 143 feet, the Pantheon is impressive because of its harmonious proportions and beautiful decorations. If the dome were doubled, it would form a sphere that fits perfectly within the interior space of the rotunda. The interior of the dome ceiling is decorated with a rose of sunken. Ornamental squares that create shifting shadows as the sun moves across the sky and light filters through the oculus. What was Dura Europo? Dura Europo was an ancient trading town established in the 3rd century B. CE and abandoned by 256 CE in modern day Syria. After being long forgotten, the settlement was rediscovered by British soldiers in the early 20th century. The site features Greco Roman temples dedicated to Greek gods such as Zeus and Artemis as well as temples decorated with images of ancient Near Eastern deities such as the Persian god Mitras, and a variation on the Sumerian moon goddess, Nana. Also found here was one of the earliest known Jewish synagogues and a Christian house church. Both early Christians and early Jews built their churches and synagogues in private houses. The Dura Europo synagogue was large and richly decorated with interior wall paintings. Emphasizing green and yellow color schemes, and featured a niche for Torah scrolls. The house church was built in 246 CE and contained one of the earliest known baptismal fonts. The walls were decorated with images from both the Old and New Testament including an image of Christ walking on water. 
the Dura Europo site preserves evidence of a rich melting pot of ancient cultures and gives scholars insights into the visual culture of early Jews and Christians of the ancient world. What is the difference between a shogun, a daimyo, and a samurai? From the 12th century until the 19th century. Japan was a feudal society controlled by a powerful ruler, called a shogun. The shogun maintained power over his large territory. The daimyo, a Japanese word meaning great names, were feudal landowners equivalent to medieval European lords. The daimyo commanded the samurai, a distinct class of swordsmen trained to be devoted to the shogun. What are the major periods of pre-modern Korean art? Under the influence of the Chinese emperor, the establishment of the Silla Kingdom resulted in a unified Korea in the year 668, around the time of the Tang Dynasty in China, and lasted until approximately the year 935. Silla rulers supported Buddhism, establishing it as Korea's official religion and embraced Buddhist architecture, though no structures from the Silla Kingdom survive. Overlapping slightly with the unified Silla Kingdom was the succeeding Koryo Kingdom, sometimes spelled Goraiyo, which began in the year 918 and lasted until 1392. Artists from the Koryo period were known for their refined ceramics.